My coaching student, JT, was doing around $1,000 in sales per month with his Amazon business when we started working together last summer, and he's since crossed over 60K in total sales and over 10K in net profit for December. And in this video, we're gonna break down exactly how he did it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Miles. I'm a 25-year-old seven-figure Amazon seller on a mission to help as many of you guys as possible smash past your Amazon seller goals in 2024. If you're interested in working directly with me, just like JT did to grow his Amazon biz, the application link is down below in the description for my coaching program. And let's get right into the video with JT. What's up, JT? Welcome to the channel, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I remember when you were just getting going, because you're you're 19 or 20, right? I just turned 21 the second. Just turned 21. Cool. Okay. Happy birthday. It's right after New Year's. Cool. And so I, I just seen on Twitter, it's like a 60K rev. So right around 10K profit for December probably. Yep. Right. Like 20, so, 20 margin, so yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's far from typical for the first year. Yeah. Not too close. Right. But you've obviously been able to have success and want to, you know, show people how that was possible and everything. But can you just kind of give everyone, you know, some background, who you are, what made you want to get into selling on Amazon? Yeah, so I used to be an electrician. That's what I did full time. And I ended up quitting that because my buddy was talking to me about Amazon. He was putting up some big numbers and I was like, that's pretty interesting. And that's pretty much how I got into it is I just started looking into it after that. I found your channel. I watched a bunch of your videos and then started doing my own thing. Sure. And that's probably fairly similar to a lot of people watching this, right? That are doing something they might not want to and they think that, you know, it's possible. And it, we obviously, you and I know it is, right? Mm -hmm. To get going with stuff. So when did you actually start selling? Oh, uh, I started selling in, I think it was March. March. Okay. So it's been like, yeah. 10 months or so. So that's, that's pretty good. Okay. So what was the total rev like this so far? It's probably, probably like 200 K or so. Yeah. It was like 160,000. 160, so, so probably like that. 25 grand yeah. profit. So yeah. not bad for, you know, could, could well, my first two thing. months, my first two months, I barely broke a thousand in sales. So yeah. like, I don't really, then I found your channel and then I started, I think the first week that I started like getting into it or the first time that I found your channel and started really putting a lot more effort into it. I put up like 10 K that month and it was 20 and then, you know, sure. Okay. There. And then I assume you probably started pretty low capital as well as a young guy. Yeah. 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 yeah low okay. capital. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And then, so what was kind of the big inflection point in terms of like, okay, this can really work, man. Was it like back to school or would you say it was December or like I sold 30 of this ASIN in one day, yeah. like what's the big inflection point? It was, it was that I just found that one ASIN and it just changed everything, you know, like, uh, there, there's sometimes products have multiple ASINs for specific, the same product. And you can really scale by posting product on, you know, saying you have stock for this amount. Like if you just spread your stock over all the ASINs, it starts to really, uh, add up your sales start to like really combine through different ASINs and stuff. Sure. And that has to be FBM to utilize that strategy. So yes. what James is talking about basically is. For example, if you look up on Amazon black Nike hoodies, right, you're going to see several different listings for the same product on Amazon. And what you can do with FBM is you can say you have three units or six units, you can split up half the stock on either and then switch it around as need be. Because for whatever reason, Amazon sees those as unique items, right? Rather than you can see in the photo that they're actually the same item, right? So that's a really good strategy, especially with FBM and such. Can you talk about how FBM has been really helpful? Because I know you've been through, obviously, at this point, back to school and then a big key for your first one. And so obviously FBM is huge, but a lot of people aren't utilizing it. So, right. So can you talk about the benefits of FBM? Yeah, you're really missing out if you're not doing FBM. Um, that, that really has changed everything for me. I was doing a little bit of FBA and sales were, they were going good. But once I started finding those specific products that you can really hammer in the FBM, you can really, really scale on a, like meaning capital wise, you can really start scaling like and getting money a lot quicker because you can turn your money around way faster as opposed to waiting for check-in times and then, you know, then the sale and then waiting for your money to get passed back to you and then spending it again. Your money just comes a lot faster when you use FBM and, that's really what was a big factor for my help in growing my money for December. Sure. And then how do you identify if something's FBM friendly? Like a, if a product you think you'll potentially be able to sell at FBM? Yeah. I just look at the buy box where the buy box is going. Sometimes it's going a lot more to, like there'll be the same amount of FBM as opposed to FBA people. And then you can really see who's getting the buy box share through Keepa and stuff like that. And that's normally how I identify it. Sure. And so as a beginner, um, I assume sourcing was a main uh, major pain point. It, it might still be today, right? That's kind of like always the bottleneck, either sourcing or capital. Um, yeah. Can you talk about some of the things, whether it be like RA or whether it be like a certain type of LA that's been really helpful in terms of actually tracking down profitable products? That's like the main bottleneck for almost everyone, especially. Yeah. So right now, um, sales are a little bit slower. So I've been trying to utilize more of RA. 
um, going to outlets and going to um, Walmarts and stuff like that, just going through clearance stuff because those type of things have normally a lot bigger discounts as opposed to if there's no sales going on, you can really get products at cheap costs and sell them for a lot more. Yeah, bro. I love RA for beginners because like with OA, typically it's like, okay, you're going to use this coupon and then you're going to use this yeah. cash back place and they might cancel your order. With R, it's like, all right, you go into that Nike out, you scan everything. There's probably going to be something good, right? And yeah. there's no fancy discounts required. So it's really nice to be able to see, you know, some of that proof of concept. And what I know you've done is focus on some of the larger brands and been able to buy the same product via RA and OA and yep. price match it or uh, pick up order and such. And, you know, really really get creative with everything too and such. So for the beginners watching, what are some of the things like, whether it be like you screwed up initially or that like you would do differently if you could do this whole process over again? Uh, I would definitely get a group faster, get, get talking to more people and more sellers. Um, you need a good group of friends that you can really talk to a lot and bounce ideas off of and share and stuff like that. And I'd also probably utilize more FBA as opposed to FBM. Um, but I don't really know if I'd do that differently because like we talked about at the beginning, I was kind of stuck on capital. I didn't have a lot of money. So FBM really helped me build my capital, uh, which is what now I'm trying to transition a lot more into the FBA and, you know, scale that up bigger because you can, it, it takes a lot of time every single night to package all your stuff to get sent out the next day or the day of and all that. And that's definitely something like time is really what you got to value as you get bigger, you know? Yeah. And there's totally pros and cons to both, right? Because with FBM, you get to sell the product a lot quicker if a listing's FBM friendly, you get the money back quicker, but you have to take the time to go ahead and fulfill that individual order, right? With FBA, you're shipping products bulk to Amazon, so it takes less time, but it also does take a lot more time that you got to wait for the product to get to Amazon and then it might have seed transfer and yeah. stuff as well. I love what you said about networking because that was so big for me as well in terms of finding Garrett, Jake, and Danny, and we would just work mm -hmm. together, source a lot of the same leads, everything. Uh, what are some strategies you use to actually, you know, find a friend group of other sellers that you can jam with and, and you know, mastermind with? Yeah, um, Twitter is a big one. Instagram, you know, you you just send DMs, you know, you reach out to someone and maybe you, you hit it off. And one of the it was like, I think my first week of selling, I still talked to that kid. I, I hit him up and um, I still talked to him to this day. He, he did pretty good numbers in December. I think he did like almost 80K in December. So and, uh, you know, I talked to him often and. I got a group of friends. We have a text message thing and we talk all the time on that. And really just my, the biggest way I found people was just Instagram and Twitter. Just yeah. It. Cause like, bro, everyone's on there, but such right. a small supply of people are actually talking about what they're doing. Right. So all the opportunity rises up to those of us that are talking about what we're doing. Yeah. And, so, you know, which is, uh, you know, obviously from a selfish perspective, very advantageous, right? But like for those of you guys watching, like this stuff's going to get so much easier if you can find people that you like, people that you can have fun with working on this stuff and everything too. In terms of the beginners watching, you think they should focus more on OA or RA to get started? Uh, it really depends on how beginning we're talking. If they literally have never had a sale in their life, I would probably go to the stores, buy some stuff, just get that proof of concept. And not but do both like while you go to the store and then you come home and then source like you got to spend hours and hours a day trying to learn what to do and like just studying you know and then eventually just compounds and over time it just adds up so if i were if i were a beginner starting brand new i'd probably go do a little bit of ra just to see what products are out there and what sells scanning stuff looking at the keep what they have in, or the on seller amp you have the little chart down there just look at all that stuff and then eventually head over to get bigger or get more of product um, online. Well said. And then in terms of getting access to capital, what's some of the strategies you've used, obviously compounding your money a lot quicker with FBM too, yeah. but to go from, you know, a thousand bucks in sales in one month to six months later, you know, 60 K of sales in one month. Like what, yeah. uh, like have you used any business credit or anything like that? Yeah. Credit cards. I, I have two credit cards and, um, I just have been leveraging that and that's been huge huge sure. for my success so yeah and the cool part with that is obviously that totally adds risk right but the neat part is that especially with the amex plum card right you have a 60-day payback period where it can be even further if you do it correctly and such mm -hmm. right and we're talking about you know learning with fbm in a couple of days right in terms of getting proof of concept on this purchase is a really powerful thing right you can move the money multiple times in a cycle and such even with amazon taking a little bit longer to pay out and yes. such. so for 2024, you're obviously, you know, clearly doing some good stuff with OA and RA. Do you have any plans to expand into wholesale or what are the plans for 2024? Um, I haven't really thought about wholesale yet, but I definitely, that is the end goal, obviously, is to get to wholesale. But um, 2024 depends on how that goes. Um, but 
I really like OA. I like the business model. It's easy. It, when you learn it, it's very, very effective. And um, I'm, I'm probably going to stick with OA for a while. Yeah. And it's tough when you're a beginner, man, right? Because yeah. he's like, I got to be able to read the charts. I got to know how mm -hmm. sales rank work. And then, okay, now I just sat here for an hour or a couple hours and did product research and I couldn't find anything profitable, right? Yeah. Little did you know that there's actually this coupon for this website. There's this coupon for this website, right? You either got to find that yourself or you have to work and collaborate with other sellers. The convenient part of that is that typically requires no money. It just requires getting on Zoom and chopping up on Discord with people and such, right? Yep. And that's something, you know, we've utilized and such that's uh, really, really helpful and everything too and such. And then where can people find you on social media if they want to, you know, catch up with you and everything? Yeah, uh, it's at Flips by JT on Instagram and Twitter. Cool. And then you're in uh, Western Florida, right? Yes, uh, right outside Tampa. Cool, sweet. So yeah, hit the man up right. That's one of my guys. I remember when we got on the first call, I was like, this, this guy's one of them right there. And then yeah. I need I need some big, big numbers in 2024 and everything. I'm sure you're going to, you know, oh, put yeah. that on and everything, man. But you're one of the people that makes this stuff a lot of fun. So I appreciate all the good energy, all the questions and such. And then I appreciate all, all you guys watching as well. JT stuff will be linked below. Make sure to check out the man right there. We'll see you guys in the next one.